cat here, your favorite ginger bibliophile. And I've got a fun one for you that I did not expect to be doing. I got a free book haul. But see if I can do this without like killing myself. Yep, that was all free. Because I have an awesome coworker that either she didn't like these books, read them, you know, already read them, done with them, didn't like them, whatever. Just hey, I've got books. I'm not gonna read them anymore. Give them to you if you like them. Great. If not, pass them on. Oh, and I had some fun. I got the skulls and the flowers. Because it's August, which is Summerween, because it's almost Halloween Eve, so we got to get into it and have some fun, right? So, I don't know most of these authors. I definitely don't know any of these books. Will I enjoy them? Maybe. Will I just be passing them on going, yeah, that is definitely not for me? Quite possibly, but let's see. What do we have? We've got Alison Brennan. Kiss Me, Kill Me, a novel of suspense. Let's see, what's this one about? Lucy Kincaid has first-hand experience dealing with deadly criminal predators, and she's fully prepared to share her many talents with the FBI. But when her career plans are derailed, her boyfriend, security expert Sean Rogan, asks for help on his latest private investigation. Using her well-honed cyber-hunting skills, Lucy is soon on the trail of a missing teenage girl with a penchant for disappearing. And a shocking secret life. That might actually be kind of fun. And we've got James Patterson's The Lake House. Is this the one from that movie with Keanu Reeves? I don't know. But I've heard of this author. I've read one book by him and liked it. Maybe two. So I'll keep this one and give it a try. Because I've been meaning to give read him again since I liked his first book. So. And then you were gone by something Jacobs. Ooh, it's Canadian. Ha ha. 25% off Canadian cover price. And then they covered up the name so I'm not entirely sure who. Something Jacobs. Ooh, it's got little deckled edges. Kind of like you expect in a hardback. And a little flip over. It's like a hardback, but not a steep dive roller coaster ride. Karen Harper. Yeah. At least they tell me what it's about on the inside flat. Let's see. After years of learning how to manage her bipolar disorder, Emily Firestone finally has her control. Even better, her life has come together. Lucky. <laughs> She's got a great job, her own place, and a boyfriend, Paolo, who adores her. So when Paolo suggests a weekend sailing trip, Emily agrees. Wine, water, and the man she loves, what could be better? Quite a few things. <laughs> but maybe that's just me trying to get me drunk and out and, like, under sunlight. That doesn't sound romantic. That sounds like he's, like, trying to off me. I think we're breaking up. <laughs> And apparently the boyfriend's going to go missing. So instead of offing her, he just took her out to disappear and make it look like her fault. Mm, maybe. Leanne Moriarty, Nine Perfect Strangers. Well, the cover's pretty. I don't know how well that shows up here, but it's got a nice, you know, beautiful, smoky thing going there. The Moriarty just makes me think of the bad guy from um, Sherlock Holmes. It's apparently a series on Hulu. And oh, NJ's going to hate it because that's not on there. That's printed. It's a sticker I can't remove. Let's see here. What's this one about? Nine people gather at a remote health resort. Some to lose weight. Some to reboot their lives. Some for reasons they can't even admit to themselves. They know these 10 days might involve some real work, but none of them can imagine just how challenging the next 10 days will be. Frances Welty arrives nursing a bad back and a broken heart. She's intrigued by her fellow guests, who don't seem to need a health resort at all. But the most intriguing person is the resort's strange, charismatic owner. Should Frances and the guests put aside their doubts and immerse themselves in every, everything Tranquillium House has to offer, or should they run while they can? 
it's definitely not going to the top of my list, but who knows, maybe. But that doesn't sound like my action pack that I usually go for. But it doesn't sound romance, so who knows. The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. Apparently was a book club favorite. So that doesn't bode well for me. <laughs> Man, hey, these were all free, so, you know. Sixteen years ago, Sylvie's sister, Persephone, never came home. Out late with the boyfriend she was forbidden to see. Well, now they're just asking for it. As soon as you tell us no, that's when he becomes that much hotter and more interesting. Come on now. Everyone that's ever been a teenage girl knows this. And every guy has loved it. <laughs> Persephone was missing for three days before her body was found. And years later, her murder remains unsolved. Maybe. I do like a murder mystery, but only occasionally. It's not one of my favorites. Sandra Brown. I've heard of her. I think I might even own one that I've never read yet. Out Fox. One man with multiple identities. Eight women who vanished without a trace. Next likely victim, his wife. Yeah, she's gonna whoop his butt, because I'm guessing that's supposed to be the wife who is a redhead. Good luck, sucker. <laughs> Unless she's a die job. But the real thing, <laughs> we got attitude to match our short heights. Inversely, of course. <laughs> Dog fire. FBI agent directs Easton is driven by a single goal. To catch the con man once known as Weston Graham. Over the years, Weston has assumed countless names and disguises. Luring eight wealthy women out of their fortunes before they disappeared without a trace. Their only common trait, a new man in their life who also vanished. Yeah, and there's more. but So it's a murder mystery with... A sketchy dude. Daniel, Daniel Steele, Leap of Faith. Yeah, I'm going to guess that one is not for me, given what I know about Daniel Steele. Must be a good author, got a billion books, but not my style. That one's definitely going to go on the, yeah, pass it along pile. But hey, it is what it is, right? We got to try some of this. The One True Ocean. Oh, okay. That's, there are two oceans, Mom used to tell me. There is one that is blue, a clean, bright Disney World blue, which simply is the mirror of a clear sky above. But look at the ocean on a cloudy day, she would say. And here lies the green ocean, the true ocean, full of algae and kelp and slimy creatures evil lurking in the shadows. It's a searing what happened novel when 20-something Jenna returns to her childhood home on the coast of Maine. She's hoping that it will soothe her in its old familiar way. Instead, the very walls of the house seem to be whispering to her of hidden truths and trails. I kind of like the idea of the ocean, but it seems more metaphorical than Getting to explore all the monsters and stuff. All the sea creatures that... What the heck. Let's see. Ashley Poston, the seven-year slip. Romantic and irresistible. Yeah, I, I thought this was a romance by the looks of it. Yeah, I know, your girl ain't a romance reader, so... This is one for the see if the used bookstore likes it. Or the library. But... Sometimes the worst day of your life happens, and you have to figure out how to live after it. For Clementine West, that means burying her head in her work as a book publicist, being practical, and forgetting the silly things her beloved aunt, Anna Lay, taught her, like living wide and chasing the moon. Clementine would rather stay grounded and keep her heart safe. For this last six months, she's done just that. Yeah, that's a definite. Not for me. The Cousins. Family first. Always. But not by that cover. Family first one to go, maybe. <laughs> oh, apparently it's a series. There's one of us is lying and one of us is next. Dun, dun, dun. So, another murder mystery. Millie, Aubrey, and 
Jonah, Story, are cousins, but they barely know each other, and they've never even met their grandmother. Well, that's sad. Grandma's awesome. Rich and reclusive, she disinherited their parents before they were born. Mm. So when they each receive a letter inviting them to work at her island resort for the summer, they're surprised and curious. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> when I'm through with you. That sounds like the start of a nice threat by Stephanie Hewen? I, I don't really know how to pronounce that. And of course, there's nothing on the back. Let's see. I'm going to guess murder mystery. Ben Gibson is many things, but he's not sorry and he's not a liar. Yeah, he's probably one of those things at least. He will tell you exactly how what started as a simple school camping trip in the mountains ended the way it did. About who lived and who died. <laughs> Guessed it. Told you. About who killed and who had the best of intentions. And he'll tell you about Rose. But he's going to tell you in his own time. Because after what happened on the mountain, time is the one thing he has plenty of. Uh, maybe. And then last, but probably not least, Dan Brown. Digital Fortress. Yeah, I kind of have a love-hate thing with Dan Brown. I like the Da Vinci Code movie. But I also hate that I was forced to read that book for a teacher that I really freaking hated. For a math class. Yeah, we had assigned reading. For a math class. Where the teacher bragged that, like, alright, y'all are like the top, like, 5% of school, the reason we have accreditation. I've always failed at least half of you, and I've never made it past chapter 5 of the book. And I don't really know the answers to these problems, so if you get an answer, it's correct. Unless I don't like you. Yeah. That teacher. So, I, I might have gotten her in trouble, and then she tried to corner me into writing a retraction. Oh yeah. I was on the newspaper in high school. <laughs> I temporarily played with I was going to be a journalist, and then yeah, no. Yeah, that, that's not how that works, honey. Just because my grandmother gives me better jewelry than your husband of 20 years. That, that's a you problem. But, yeah, having to read it for class has kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. Especially for some middle-aged lady that hates teenagers but yet teaches them. So, let's see. What's this one? When the NSA's invincible code-breaking machine encounters a mysterious code it cannot break, the agency calls its head cryptographer Susan Fletch. A brilliant and beautiful mathematician. When she, what she uncovers sends shockwaves through the corridors of power. The NSA is being held hostage, not by guns or bombs, but by a code so ingeniously complex that if released, it would cripple U.S. intelligence. Caught in an accelerating tempest of secrecy and lies, Susan Fletcher battles to save the agency she believes in. Betrayed on all sides, she finds herself fighting, not only for her country, but also for her life. In the end, the life of the man she loves. I could have gone without the last line. That, now that actually sounds like something that I would read. So, this one, I will definitely be keeping and giving it a try. Some of those other ones are definite no's. Some are will see's. Have you read any of these? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Were they actually what they said they were about on the back? Because, um, y'all know we've been lied to a few times. It's here. The plot summary says this. And then you read the book and, Yeah. How much it has to do with the book it takes up about as much space as it took to write it on the back. So, drop a line, let me know, and I will see you soon. Bye. Happy reading.